and gentlemen, and welcome inside the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. This is Boxing, this is Top Rank. Presented by Hall of Fame Boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. My name is Mark Chinook, and again, welcome inside MSG. Before we get started, we do have to acknowledge today, Mr. Bob Arum turns 91 years old, and he's sitting right down front. Happy birthday, as many of you know in the boxing world, the class of 2023 into the Hall of Fame. Our very own Brad Goodman, Timothy Bradley Jr., and Brad Jacobs, all part of the class of 2023. Big and top rank and everybody proud, so congratulations to the three of you. Uh, this is brought to you by Boost Mobile Money is Power, Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations, AutoZone, Get in the Zone, and by Caesars Sportsbook. You can tell by all of the bodies on this stage that Saturday night in the mecca of boxing is going to be one for the ages and an incredible way for top rank to close out this incredible year of fights. A huge junior welterweight battle. They are sitting on either side of me. Tiafimo Lopez, Sander Martin, thank you guys for being here. And that is we make our way out. Jared Anderson, Jerry Forrest, Xander Zayas, Alexis Salazar, Keyshawn Davis, and Juan Carlos Burgos. Keyshawn, I'm going to start with you down there. That's right, sip your coffee, get some energy, not that you need it. Let's talk about family for a quick second. You know, how does your family keep you motivated, keep you in check as you continue on this journey in the pro sport of boxing? You know, now that my brother, Kelvin Davis, is fighting with me with top rank, it's, it's even more motivation for us to both make it to the top. But not only that, you know, Keon Davis right now is competing to get on the Olympic team. And most likely when he get on this Olympic team, it's going to be two DB3 brothers that been on the Olympic team, and, and that's, that's legendary right there. And coming into the pros for Keon, coming to the top rank, it's going to be three brothers competing to become world champions. That's going to make it times two. So that's just what it is. That's an unbelievable family right there. Uh, what does this mean to you to be here today to kick off uh, you know, this press conference in the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden? Um, this means everything, man. Shouts out to top rank. Shouts out to ESPN. Um, shouts out to everybody here, man, just supporting all these prospects on this card right here and the main event. Um, this is everything. Madison Square Garden, the, the big garden. You know, this is my second time fighting here this year. Last year I got the, the knockout to the, with the body shot. You know, that was kind of legendary for me. And now I'm fighting a, a tough, tough opponent um, sitting down there for me. And I expect to, you know, have another performance, but not only that, to stop him as well. Yeah, tough opponent, and I have Guardi off camera to do some translating for me, but going down to Juan Carlos Burgos, thank you very much for being here. And same question that I just asked Keyshawn, what, is, what does this opportunity mean to you to fight at Madison Square Garden on ESPN? Buenas tardes a todos. No, pues es una gran oportunidad. Este, tengo la satisfacción de, de que esta pelea sea la tercera ocasión que que peleé en este recinto tan histórico para mí es algo emocionante. Este, tengo un empate y una derrota en este recinto y el día sábado vengo por la victoria. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me, you know, uh, this is a legendary uh, venue. I have fought already three times over here. I have had a loss and a draw and Saturday I'm coming for the win. Cardi, I want to ask him about uh, Perez in his camp and what those uh, sparring sessions and having the former champ in camp meant to him in preparation for this weekend. ¿Qué significó tener para ti a Perez en entrenamiento contigo y preparándote para esta pelea? Oh, pues fue una muy buena experiencia. Este, hicimos, realizamos un buen trabajo en la preparación. Este, sé de antemano que no es una pelea fácil, pero Tengo la confianza y la tercera, la certeza de, de salir con la mano en alto. Sé que no va a ser fácil, pero sin duda alguna vengo por la victoria. That was a great experience and prepared me very well for this this big opportunity. And I have the certainty that uh, I know it's not going to be uh, an easy fight. It's going to be a tough fight, but I'm coming for the win. Keyshawn, you mentioned he is a tough vet. Does he uh, does he present any challenges that you possibly haven't seen before? Oh, definitely. Um, on paper and pros, as a pro fighter, he's definitely the tough, the toughest opponent I fought. And um, he's definitely gonna bring new challenges to the ring that most likely I've never seen before. He's a vet, you know. He done fought Mikey Garcia and a lot more other champions. And um, 
I'm just, I'm just, you know, happy he took this fight, and I'm excited to see how this fight is going to turn out. I asked him about his camp. You, uh, you had a camp in Colorado. What was that like? Shoot, training Terrence Crawford, man. Oh my gosh, Terrence is is an animal at training camp. Waking up at 7 a.m. and just training, and then sparring him that same day. You know, camp was tough, and for a tough opponent like this, you know, it was definitely needed. You know, it definitely prepared me for for Saturday night, and, and like I say, it's gonna be a spectacular performance, and I, and I should get that stopping. That's right. Thanks for being here, Juan, as well. Gracias. Uh, moving in one seat, we have Xander Zayas and Alexis Salazar. Xander, I'm start with you, brother. Third fight this year. How excited are you to be back at the Garden? Man, um, first off, I wanna wish um, Bob and happy birthday. Um, thanks, Top Rank and ESPN for the opportunity. I'm excited. I'm excited. Back in New York, um, had the opportunity to fight here in March. Then I had to cancel the fight in June. So being back here now as a NBO champion means a lot more. We're excited. Alexis, coming over to you. Your last fight was a tough fight. What did you take away from that that prepares you for a, a tougher battle here in New York? Yeah, well, honestly, I feel real good. You know, uh, made a mistake, paid for it, you know. Uh, this fight, uh, I'm prepared, you know, uh, did a good camp. Yeah, I'm feeling really good, weight's good, everything's good. And uh, I don't expect, like, I expect a good fight, you know, he's a good fighter. And thank you for the opportunity, and thank you, Top Rank, thank you, everybody. And I, I feel good, I feel real good, and like, I, I learned, like I said, I learned, a, I learned a really good experience with a really good fighter, you know, and like, I feel good. I'm going to ask you the same question, I'll probably ask everybody on the stage this question, how exciting is it? To be when we look at these these uh, banners in front of us, Madison Square Garden, world's most famous. I don't believe this shit. It's a fucking dream come true. <laughs> there, there you go. Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. But shit, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> hey, honestly, that's what we love up here. That was my Oprah moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that one out of the footage and save it for my reel. Uh, <laughs> what can you do Saturday night to shock the boxing? I feel good, you know. Uh, I respect my my opponent. He's a good fighter. Shit, I'm like everybody else, you know. I came here to win, and I'm ready for the fucking win, you know. It's upset season, baby. Woo! Somebody liked it. Xander, I'm coming back over here. Um, your last fight, Espadas TKO in the fifth. Did you take anything away from that fight that uh, that stands out that you learned specifically from that that battle? Well, yes, definitely. Um... The tougher they are, the easier it is to beat them. And um, Saturday night, I'm looking forward to do the same thing. Again, I got a great fighter, a great veteran fighter in front of me um, with a great, great um, coaching staff. So I have to keep you know, the game plan going, have fun in there, and keep listening to my corner. Everything else um, will come into place. You mentioned the toughness uh, of this fighter. <coughs> Were you able to watch tape, and is there anything that he presents that you have to keep an eye out for that you haven't seen before? Um, you know, I feel like every fight is, a, is something new, it's a new experience. Um, but we'll have to, to wait until Saturday and see. Um, I, do, I did watch a couple videos, I don't want to give too much of the game plan. But um, we, we are ready for Saturday night. Before we move on to our next, uh, our next set of fighters, uh, Xander, I want to give you the opportunity to speak about Fundacion Rimas which is uh, a charity near and dear to your heart that's raising money for hurricane relief in Puerto Rico. So please take a second to talk about what, what your plan is here with this fight Saturday. Yeah, um, behind me we have the QR code um, for, for my uniform that I'll be, I'll be using this, this Saturday night. Um, we'll be auctioning the uniform and um, Fundacion Rimas, whatever they get from the, from the auction will, will be donated to Puerto Rico and other families affected by the hurricanes. So. Um, you guys can scan the code and help in any way possible. It will, it will mean the world to me. So thank you guys. Everybody in this room right now who's uh, got a camera pointed over here, please take a picture of that and uh, post it to your socials. And everybody tuning in, uh, please do your part. Scan that QR code and, and make a contribution if you can. Uh, Alexis, Sander, thank you so much for being here. All right, moving in one more. Uh, the heavyweights, Jared Anderson, Jerry Forrest. Jared, are you taking, are you guys, what are you making, donations? You want me to, you want me to hold for station identification here while you guys make a contribution? <laughs> uh, Jared, first time uh, that this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds. 
First time for you that we see your name with a 10 rounder associated with it. Uh, I would imagine you don't anticipate it going 10, but how was camp knowing that this is now a 10 rounder? Um, it was a great camp. You know, we come always prepared to go the distance uh, at every fight, you know, but uh, we did do what we needed to do. You know, we had a great training camp. Um, we prepared well. Um, great conditioning. You know, shout out to my conditioning coach, uh, Tere Stevenson. Um, and shout out to my, my coaches, you know, we did a great job um, and we came in shape. Yeah. Jerry, are you being overlooked in this fight? Do you feel like you're being overlooked? Not at all. Um, <clears throat> he's a good fighter and his camp is smart, you know, so I, I don't think anyone would ever overlook him. Again. I mean, if you've seen me fight before, you know, there's no way you're going to overlook me, so. 100%. Uh, my, my next note is here, you went the distance with Pula your last time out. What did you learn from that fight? Because that was a battle. Uh, and I'm sure he watched that tape. What did you learn from that fight? Um, just, I learned a lot about myself in that fight. Uh, that was my first fight with an injury. So, um, just learning how to deal with the injury inside the ring. Uh, learning how to just just make it work for you, you know. Um, I took a lot out of that. I had to make sure I went back to camp and just fully healed first. Make sure my body was, you know, fully settled and, and fully ready to go again. Now I'm back, you know, you see me work before you know what I do. Yeah, Saturday's gonna be uh, unreal. Uh, Jared, I want to come back to you. Last time we had one of these conversations, uh, there was a big Serbian uh, standing on the other side of you in the ring, and I think I asked you, I said, hey, was that, is this your toughest opponent to date? Here we are again, I'm going to ask you, is this your toughest opponent to date? Because I, I didn't think that fight would go the way it did, and you surprised a lot of people and put them out quick. You've got them looking at me like I can swing at me. But is this your toughest opponent to date? Uh, without a doubt. You know, um, his his record speaks for itself, you know, his resume speaks for itself, coming in there with some of the best, um, going to distance with some of the best, you know, so yeah, definitely without that. You talked about conditioning because that's uh, that's come up a lot now with every heavyweight fight that we see. Uh, when we see a 10 rounder planned, it doesn't really happen that you go very, very far into the, you don't go very deep into rounds, but are you ready to go the distance if, if called upon? Of course, always. You know, we come ready to um, go the distance. We, go, we, we 12 round fight ready. So, um, like I said, you know, we train for it in and out of the ring every day. Jerry, studying his tapes, is there anything that you got to look out for? Or is it just your game plan, impose your will, and go after it? I never deviate. I mean, you ever seen any of my interviews? My, it's just the same every time. I'm out boxing, I work. I just, it's just what I do. Um, I don't have a game plan for anyone. I know what I possess. So my team was at the camp, my team was at what they do. I mean, in every fight that I fought, you, you've seen me work. So, I mean, like I said, I, I only focus on work on me personally. You know, I don't, I don't do the whole opponent thing. Walking into the ring, Madison Square Garden, does it get any better than that? I can tell you now, I, I, <laughs> the walls where I train at, you got the fucking Ali posters with the MSG. I mean, it's, it's legendary, you know what I mean? So, um, I, it's, it's, for me, it's more respected. You know, this is a sacred place where people have been fighting here for, for years, for centuries. So it is for me, it's an honor and a, uh, it's just a respectable thing for to, to see a guy like you know Bob Aaron come back uh, to to know that this is the most famous arena in the world and I get to share that stage with a lot of good fighters. So it's really a blessing to me, honestly, to to be able to share the stage with Jared, to be able to share the stage with my bro. You know what I'm saying? Like we all from the same city, we all from the same place. So it's just it's, I'm just honored to be. When times get tough in the ring, you're sitting in your corner, and uh, you know you got to get back up. How does this building? How does this motivate you to leave it all in the ring, so to speak? Uh, after about three to four rounds, the crowd is usually always swaying to my side. So uh, the crowd definitely motivates me. Um, you know, any, anyone here can feel the love, they can feel the tension. So uh, as you're working, you can feel the crowd. You know, engaging more. Jared, one last one for you, and it's, it's kind of uh, in, in line with what I just asked. Does the garden give you that extra boost, or do you just roll in Mission Impossible, Mission the same every time? Um, it's kind of the Mission the same every time I go in, uh, but it is an extra uh, special day, you know, to fight in the garden. It's, it's amazing with all the history, you know, um, and the bright lights, the crowd. Uh, definitely last time I, I was out here, you know, the crowd was amazing. You know, they supported me a lot. I'm out there again, a lot of fans out here. Listen, thank you guys so much. Looking forward to Saturday night. And we turn to our main event.
Tiafima Lopez, Sandor Martin, thank you for joining us. Uh, Tio, I want to start with you. Um, a title shot awaits the winner. Is it tough to look past this one, or is it uh, is it mission at hand? Here we go. First of all, you know, just kind of thank God for everything, all the blessings, and just bringing us here and having the opportunity to show our talents and our gifts to the world. Uh, this definitely is Madison Square Garden, the most of the Mecca of Meccas. You know, so this we all have an opportunity here. We have an objective to to do on Saturday night. And no, you know, my whole thing really is just how do we continue to pursue on the takeover takeover? You know, we just got to keep winning. Whatever they put in front of us, we beat them. Guardy, I'm going to ask you to jump in here as well. Uh, Sander took this fight on a three weeks notice after Pedraza backed out. You ready to go? <laughs> Estoy absolutamente listo para la pelea, por eso he venido. Eh, son tres semanas de aviso de preparación específica, pero yo venía entrenando en el gimnasio porque soy deportista 24-7 todos los días del año. Quiero agradecer a Bob Aron, a Top Rank, la oportunidad que me dan de estar boxeando en el Madison ante un gran adversario como este Ofimo López y espero que podamos dar un gran combate el sábado a los aficionados. I'm absolutely ready to fight, you know, I'm an athlete 24-7. Uh, I've got the three weeks notice for the fight, but I was already in camp, you know, training. Uh, and I'm just ready to fight. I want to thank Top Rank and Bob Adam for the opportunity, and we're going to give a big fight to the fans on Saturday. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Uh, I've always, you know, you're always in the gym, ready to go. What does this opportunity mean to you, headlining the Garden Saturday night, Heisman night in New York City, a lot of eyes on this fight? What does this opportunity mean to you? ¿Qué significa esta oportunidad para ti? Una noche grande en el Madison Square Garden, una noche Heisman, una gran oportunidad para ti. ¿Qué significa? Para mí es eh, lo más grande que me ha pasado en mi carrera deportiva y prácticamente también en mi país es muy difícil eh, ser boxador saliendo desde España. Son 11 años de carrera profesional, 42 combates profesionales para tener una oportunidad como esta. En el momento que he tenido la, la oportunidad, evidentemente no lo podía rechazar. Yo fui López, el Madison, Top Rank, hacer historia. Se trata de eso, de hacer historia. This is the biggest opportunity in my career, you know, coming from Spain is very tough to be a boxer. Uh, 11 year career, uh, 42 fights, and this is the bigger opportunity that I have gotten. So it was three week notice, but I had to take the opportunity. We are about making history, so that's why I'm here. I love it. Tio, I want to come over to you. In the ever-changing world of boxing, will we see anything new from you Saturday night? Absolutely. You know, that's what I'm all about. You know, I think that we all have a, a canvas to perform at. You know, I'm an artist myself, so I'm over here just trying to be abstract <laughs> as much as possible when I when it comes to the ring. You know, it's all about just giving the fans what they really want, and that's entertainment. And that goes for everybody here sitting right now. We are in the entertainment business, not boxing business. And you guys got to remember that. So by all means, go go after everything that you can do. You know, I follow the likes of Prince Nassim, and those are the things that you guys will see. It doesn't mean I got to show up like crazy, you know. However, it's just all about just giving what they really want. It's just not about getting the job done and the win. It's what you do before and what you do in there and then afterwards. Um, and that's why we are headlining Madison Square Garden under a great card, great card. I mean, the talent that we have here, this is amazing for me. You know, this is the opportunity of a lifetime for anyone here. Every time I come out here to the garden, this is my eighth time fighting at Madison Square Garden, fourth time in the big room. And uh, all I can say, man, is just I'm very, very grateful, man. Very grateful. Last year, nearly lost my life, and now I just get to redo it in a better way. Three weeks ago, when uh, Pedraza pulled out of the fight, what was that like for you guys in camp? Did you have to reevaluate, change directions a little bit with a new opponent, or was it just business as usual? Preparation is key. You got to be prepared for everything and anything. You know, sometimes people are going to want to set a detour for you, and you just got to be prepared for that as well. You know, you got to know that you got to know your routes and your your routes. So really, um, no, we were always prepared. Look, Pedraza actually was probably, I'm not overlooking Sander Martin. However, you gotta look at it, you know, Pedraza, even though he came off a draw, he's someone that's able to switch from Southpaw to Orthodox, you know? So we already had that in camp. We had Southpaws, we had Orthodox in the gym. So we already were ready for anything and, and everything that they had to come. No surprises over here though? The only surprise I think everybody's really gonna see is just like how better did I get from my first my first career loss, my failure. You know, I think that really what I, I would like to tell everybody here is that um, you never really lose. The only time you ever 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 really lose is when you quit. When you say no months. That's when you really that's when you lose. 
Other than that, man, you, you have to understand that these failures are meant to make him stronger and grow. Why we have the greats and the legends like Jordan, Kobe, may God bless his soul, you know, and Tiger Woods and LeBron James and all these other great athletes around the board, even Serena Williams, you know, everyone. And Tiana, don't leave And her. Tiana, of course. You know, um, and it's all those things that you really have to take in. A lot of people are so scared now, but this is a new time. This is a new era, you know. Uh, we all emulate Floyd in some way. He's taught a great, great, great uh, way of how you can move. However, it only worked for him. We all have a different art. We all have a different way. And I think that it's you all got to know your audience. Know your audience who you want to attract. Know who you're trying to shoot for. And uh, I guarantee you, you know, you'll be the first signed of anything like that. Look, I'm the first boxer to be signed to Bud Light because of it. You know, it's just a lot of work, though. You got to, the facts are there. You know, I'm not trying to brag it, it's just to help the, the new generation. And like I said, you know, when you're in here and you're doing what you gotta do, no matter what it is, our job literally is, this ain't a job for us, we know we're gonna do Saturday night. We have fun, you know? That's that's the light work, that's easy. The, the hard part is the cameras. You gotta promote your fight, you gotta go out there. Even if it's I Love Boxing Podcast and they have five subscribers or 10, you go and take it and don't charge them because they're helping you promote your fight and your, your name. You know, I don't charge nobody when I go on these interviews at all because we're all helping each other. Do you bring beer? Yeah, I bring beer, I do, I, I do a shotgun, and whatever you like, you know? <laughs> uh, Bud Light, I'm available too. <laughs> Call me anytime. Guardy, I want to go back Free Bud Light for everybody. <laughs> we just lost your sponsorship. <laughs> Uh, I want one more over here for Sander. Uh, we talk about the opportunity in the big room here at the Garden, but as I started with Tio, this is there's a title shot waiting after this fight for the uh, the victor. What does that mean to him to have possibly that opportunity dangled as a carrot in front of him? Esta una gran oportunidad por la posición que tiene en el Garden, pero también porque el ganador podría estar peleando por una oportunidad de título mundial. ¿Qué significa esa oportunidad de título mundial para ti? Al final eh, yo vengo para eso, vengo para, para ganar, respeto mucho a Teofimo López, la carrera que ha tenido él como deportista profesional, lo respeto mucho como boxeador. Solo deseo que demos un gran combate y bajemos con salud del ring el, el próximo sábado en el, en el Madison. Para mí es un momento muy especial, pero no miro más allá de este combate. Al final creo que él y yo vivimos en dos mundos diferentes, él vive en el mundo del espectáculo y yo vivo en el mundo del boxeo. Cuando él estaba grabando entrevistas, cuando él estaba viendo los links, cuando él estaba de compras, yo estaba entrenando. At the end of the day, you know, uh, we're just here to win. Uh, of course, this is a big opportunity and I'm gonna take it, uh, but I'm not looking past that. I respect Teofimo Lopez, what he has done in his career, uh, but we live in two different worlds. He lives in the entertainment world and I live in the boxing world. Uh, while he was doing interviews and was watching the needs and everything, I was training. So for me, this is the boxing world and I'm here to win. Fantastic. You wanna say something, Teo? I saw the mic come on. I always have something to say. <laughs> okay. uh, for me, nah, that's good. That means he's watching me. He's watching me close. That's good. That's where I need him right now. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, a huge night of fights at the Mecca of Boxing. Tomorrow we'll be right here as we weigh them all in. But again, we want to wish Bob Arum a happy birthday. We want to congratulate Brad Goodman, Timothy Bradley Jr., and Brad Jacobs on being inducted into the Hall of Fame class of 2023. And a big round of applause to these fine gentlemen for spending time with us this afternoon. As always, this is boxing, this is top rank, and we'll see you tomorrow as they step on the scale. Have a great day, everybody. Yeah, get a fish eye. Night, night.